Welcome to part three of understanding the new activation process for Rockwell software. In part two, we reviewed how to add a user to your Rockwell software license. And in this video, we'll review toolkit licensing options and deployment recommendations. If you've purchased or renewed a Rockwell toolkit recently, you may notice there are different types of toolkit options available, concurrent, named, and legacy toolkits. The differences between these options are in the way that they're implemented. Concurrent toolkits being slightly more flexible, but also more costly. They can bind to an activation server, a dongle, can be shared automatically, and has a code meter type activation. Name toolkits are very similar to the concurrent option, except they can't be bound to a dongle, and the activations are not automatically shared. Instead, they're borrowed. And we'll take a look at some of these examples a little later. Lastly, the Legacy Toolkit is an add-on option for older versions of RS Logix 5000, Historian Classic, RS View 32, and it has a Flexera type activation. The differences between the Code Meter and Flexera type activations are beyond the scope of this video, but you can learn more about them in one of our blog articles. There's a link in the description. There will also be a comparison chart at the end of this video. Now that you have a base understanding of what the Toolkit options are, how can you deploy them in your organization? Let's take a look at a few common examples. For scenario number one, we have a team of six engineers, and all six of them work with Rockwell projects full time. So assigning an activation to each engineer is likely your most effective option. Each engineer will need to bind the toolkit activation to their computer, as presented in part one of this series. The owner of the toolkit or an administrator first needs to assign all toolkit licenses to their engineers using the method described in part two of the series. Each engineer will receive an email with their own activation. After they click the red activate software button in their email, the activation will be stored on their computer. For scenario two, we have a team of six engineers like we did before, but not all of them will need to use Rockwell software at once. So we don't need six toolkit licenses. Instead, three licenses should be enough to cover our team. It's also assumed that the engineers are typically connected to an activation server. Let's take a look at this scenario, but with a named toolkit and what a typical deployment might look like. The owner of the toolkit or an administrator first needs to assign all toolkit licenses to themselves, then bind to an activation server. Whenever an engineer needs to use Rockwell software, they will need to borrow it from the server. A borrowed activation is manually checked out from an activation server for a predetermined amount of time, up to 365 days for toolkits, and stay on the machine until the time is expired or is manually placed back in the activation server. They can also be borrowed to an activation dongle if required for up to the same 365 days. If an engineer disconnects from the activation server, their borrowed activation will follow. If the borrowed activation expires, it will no longer work on the machine and automatically become available again in the activation server. And at this point, it's ready to be borrowed by another engineer. This method also applies to the concurrent and legacy type toolkits so then, what is the difference with concurrent or a legacy toolkit? Using the same scenario as before, scenario number two, the owner of the toolkit or an administrator first needs to assign all toolkit licenses to themselves and then bind them to the activation server. Then, whenever an engineer spins up Rockwell software, if they are connected to the server, they will automatically use an activation instead of having to borrow it. Now, if an engineer is done using the software or disconnects from the activation server, the activation will automatically go back to the server and is now free to use by another engineer. Unlike the name toolkits, concurrent and legacy toolkits can also be bound to an activation dongle if required. And these are just a few examples of how to deploy toolkit licensing. In our next video, we will go more in depth with license deployment using virtual machines with some more common examples. 